Can a $330 home 3D printer match up with a $100,000 professional printer? Today is the day, we're gonna find out. Sorry to interrupt you guys with some shameless self promo, but I wanted to give a heads up. There's only two more days left to go on the campaign for the Squidmore Infinity 2024 airbrush. Probably the best airbrush in the world right now. And if you want this version with the FPC valve and the beautiful design that is not going to be available at any other time in the future, you might want to grab it right now. While you're at it, Maybe grab some of the paints that we also have available and just released. You can get, grab the dwarf that we're gonna compare in this video. So do it now, back to the video. Lucas, we have tested so many 3D printers throughout the history like of this all of channel, them. but never quite tested anything like what we're gonna test today. And that brings us to what might be the most expensive 3D printer we've ever had on the show. It has so many gadgets. It is incredibly high-end industrial 3D printer and compare that to the best home 3D printers we have. Even more interestingly, back then we tested among others 4K printers but also the winner of the test, the DWS 029 3D printer which cost like 60,000 euros and it just literally blew everything out of the waters. So we have another test from that, I'm gonna compare that to today's 3D printers that cost over $100,000. <laughs> Let's just dive into it with the first printer of the day, Lucas. Is the Anycubic Photon Mono M5S Pro. And this 3D printer normally ranges around 570 US dollars, but right now they have a campaign, so it's gonna be the cheapest printer of the test, coming in at a whooping low $330 for an entire 3D printer. Let's see how the minis look. We have two different minis from every printer. One of them is the dwarf that's included in our paint set. Pretty cool. The name of the mini is Dukas. Almost sounds like Lucas. So <clears throat> this printer, I've had the unpleasant uh, work uh, task to clean these and prepare these. Yeah. And I gotta say, this is fucking balls. This is so trashy. I am honestly very surprised by the quality of this because we've been using the recommended settings from Anycubic. They sent us the 3D printer to test and we asked them like, send us your best 3D printer. I just find it to be very soft. A lot of the areas feel like they've almost missed the texture like here on the side here. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't nearly have any texture. Back here, the materials have blended together um, so we've like lost the detail. Like I'm, sh I'm sure there are ways to optimize it and try different resins, but this is the stuff that they recommended us to use. And also, before you guys start commenting, oh, but you just did a poor job cleaning them. I cleaned all of these prints at the same time. With brushes. With and... brushes and I dipped them in at the same time to make sure that yeah. all of them got the same treatment. Which is uh, not great. I mean, for its price, it's a cheap 3D printer, $330. It is not the most cheap 3D printer, but considering how big the build plate is, I, th I still think the price is not super unfair. To me, it's just, I, I don't think I would ever, just like the back of the yeah. dwarf, some of the fabric on the back that has just blended together with the entire mini, I just think that is way under what you'd expect. Um, it's just a it's lot just, of textures being lost throughout yeah, the entire mini. Yeah, it's very soft. And overall, I, I do have a slight, like, I kind of like it when the resin turns matte. Yeah. When the finish is matte finish sure, rather sure, than sure, the glossy sure. one. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that would help, but not enough to save it. No. Because we, I think we need to bring out the dragon's head, which is a part of another miniature that we are working on that's hopefully going to be part of a board game in the future. It looks really freaking amazing. But we have the same problem here where we have like the eyes are almost like disappearing. There is, you can see that there is resin that's not, um, like it's it's been hardening and softened in the, the yeah. pr printing process. And we did not have any of this problem with any of the other printers that we've had. And something I find <clears throat> to be really surprising as well is that it can be so soft but you still have a lot of layer lines. Yeah. Like look at the thigh and... Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. It's the same here with the, the horns and stuff. Like you have these super soft areas, yeah. but you still but have... the layer lines are super crisp. Which is contradictory almost. Yeah. I think uh, we need to bring out our second cheapest printer and see 
how that one holds up. So printer number two, our personal favorite home 3D printer. This one as well has been sent to us, but this time by Frozen and it's the Sonic Mini 8KS. And this 3D printer is not much more expensive. It's $367 on their website. And uh, just comparing the prints, Lucas. Do you notice any difference? I mean, it's like night and day. For one, the crispness of the details, like looking at the face, the beard, if we look at the back of the pants that we had such problems with, you just have so much more crispness and detail. Or was it 30 more dollars yeah. for the printer? Like it doesn't have any layer lines either. It's just a perfect mix of having the soft shapes soft, and the sharp, crispy details, super, super well detailed. Yeah, this one is just really, really nice. I, I really enjoy this one. And like everything just feels clearly separated. All the details are so clear. And it seems like it was easier to clean as well because you have a lot less like uh, supports left yeah. over on the Mini. So I assume that the resin is easier to remove from the yeah. miniature, which is a, a lot of positives to this one. So it's been printed with the 8K resin and yeah, just as always, whenever we've tested this printer, I just think the, the quality came out. Perfect. Super, I have no complaints. Yeah. Moving on to the dragon head. Yeah. 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 It's just everything, like the texture of the cheekbones here, that is just completely yeah. softened and on the any Look at the eyes as well. Yeah. You can see and the, the nostril. It's just everything has a lot higher quality. And you can see on the teeth, you have the gum wrapping around the teeth on the... On the anycubic one at the top. You also have very clear layer lines on the top of the nose of the dragon that you don't really have on the frozen printer. There you have the texture from the yeah. file. I think it's an easy dub wow. for the frozen 3D printer for both of the miniatures to have very different textures, very different qualities that you need. And the frozen just smacked it out of yeah. the water. The only negative downside compared compared to the Anycubic one is the build plate is smaller. But yeah, considering how much better the light is at curing the resin and the yeah. resin is for Frozen, they are not competing in the same league. So that means throw away the Anycubic, Anycubic ones. in the garbage bin. Ah. Printer three. Lucas, it is time for the third 3D printer. And this is a printer that we've kind of enjoyed. Yeah, it's, it's the Hagears 3D printer, which is slightly more expensive, the whole setup and everything. And this 3D printer comes in at about $800 today. So it's a little bit over twice the price of the Frozen 3D printer. The main upside, in my opinion, with the Hagear system is their whole system. Like everything is connected. It's super easy with the software to get prints and it's easy to clean and harden. Yeah. Yeah, and also the build plate is like double the size of the frozen, frozen printer. One. Yeah. So that's also kind of nice and yeah. neat. While we were waiting for Lucas to finish some 3D prints, we could have listened to a podcast and why not one called White Vault. White. White. Usually when Lucas and I have these longer painting sessions, we put on a podcast and just listen to that entire thing through the entire day. It's just awesome to keep you company. And this week's sponsor, White Vault. Sorry, White, no. The White Vault. <laughs> So I can say the White Vault. The White Vault is a horror fiction podcast set in the chilling polar nights of Svalbard. It's a story of an international rescue team sent to discover the source of a mysterious signal at a remote research station. But it takes a turn for the worse. And cool thing with this story is like it's very gripping. I don't want to spoil too much without having any crazy jump scares. With that said though, you might still shit your pants and maybe you won't need Vinoxide anymore. But don't just take my word for it. The White Vault has won multiple awards. The complete story is now available for free. So you have the link down in the video description. Go get yourself some awesome story time. And even cooler yet, guys, there's a spin-off already available that came out now in October. So you want to go check that out as well once you're done with part one. Subscribe now and await the chilling horrors. Let's go. So let's see how the print quality compares to the Frozen Mini. And just <clears throat> looking at this dwarf yeah. from the get-go, I'm really surprised. Yeah. I've never like spent too much or paid too much attention to how the print quality is on this printer. Yeah. But it's surprisingly good. Yeah. Like I think it fires up pretty decently with the frozen one. Yeah. You can notice it, it's a bit softer. Yeah. Like throughout the entire piece. But still, this like I would it's paint really this. nice, yeah, yeah. Do we have any layer lines on that one? Can no, we I zoom in on the photos and see? Or I think you have some on the thigh, maybe <laughs> ever so slightly. If we look here, 
Yeah. Yeah, you actually have quite a few layer lines. And how is the frozen looking? There's just some on yeah, the ridge. Yeah, so when of you're really zoomed in, you can see a little bit on the ridge of the nose. But I would say it's a clear upside for the frozen printer. But in terms of quality, I would say that, like, considering how easy the Hager's printer is to work with, yeah. I still think that it, it it's definitely worth its money and you of have course. a much bigger build plate. Um, there is one thing that I found here on the dragon's head. If you look at the teeth where you on the frozen printer have very clear separation between the gums and yep. the teeth, it is not quite as crisp on the edges between the two dragons. Unfortunately, hey guys, in terms of print quality itself, just using the recommended resin and settings, I would say that the quality itself of the frozen printer slightly has better. a slight upper hand. Yeah. With the bare eye, it's barely noticeable, but when you look super close and especially through the camera with the macro lens, you can see that there's a slight advantage, which is kind of fascinating, like a half price printer kind of smashing out the hay gears in quality. Yeah. But yeah, I, again, I want to reiterate the system for it. Yeah, We've had really such a good time user for friendly. it. So uh, I don't think we're anytime soon gonna remove it from our printer setup. Printer number four. Okay, Lucas, the upcoming two 3D printers we're gonna compare are one, the DWS-029, and it's printed by Eme Molero, which is, in my opinion, probably the best 3D printer in the world. And second <laughs> to Lucas. But I might have fucked up, Lucas. Why? Because yesterday I was prepping for this video and uh, I misplaced the dragon head that we were gonna use to compare in this video. So unfortunately we only have the dwarf, but we do have some other dragon parts that we can check as well. What the But this is the printer that won the last time. The printer cost him at that time around 60,000 euros. <laughs> oh, oh my freaking god. It is currently not available anymore, which means that it's an already old printer. But what can the world's best printer do with an old printer? Can he still deliver and smash the quality from the rest of the prints? Let's compare it to the Frozen and find out. <laughs> Oh, I mean, it's like every time you bring them out, it's like, okay, it's almost the frozen is kind of shit, Lucas. <laughs> to be honest, it is kind of, it's almost too good. When you look at the ring of his belt uh, with your bare eye and just compare it to the frozen one, you can just see how much better the light is in his printer, like how much more crisp he gets every detail and everything is perfectly like without layer lines. I don't know, we gotta, I guess we gotta check the macro and see if there are any. But with the naked eye, I honestly, I cannot tell any difference. You can see here on the macro, just the width of the, the hood, three times the size on the frozen yeah, one. Yeah, so that's light leak and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's again, probably with the frozen, it's probably possible to dial optimize in, yeah. that a little bit more and op like dial it in. But again, it's like the difference is almost the same as between the Hagers and the frozen. It's like another level up. Like you can't complain about nothing with the DWS print. It's a good thing with both of these that the resin is kind of, it doesn't have any translucency no, to it's it. So matte. it's easy to see the details, but yeah, it's just, everything is just so freaking good. Okay, Lucas, time for printer number five, the Stratasys, whatever the fuck it's called, Polyjet J55. And this 3D printer, my ladies and gentlemen, is made for industrial use. And it has so many different features that you can add to it that every machine is customized to the buyer. And we've gotten a rough estimate that the price would range between $100,000 and $150,000, depending on what additions you add to it and how much you kit it out, which is... It's a lot of money. Before we show the minis, we have to be quite clear that this 3D printer has so many features that aren't maybe made for miniatures, miniatures <laughs> but are made for other really, really cool things. So one example of that would be this example that they sent us where they have 3D printed a mosquito inside a 3D printed pebble, which is pretty freakishly amazing and one of the other strengths with this printer as opposed to the other ones is you have no support no so support everything at all. comes support free no need like you don't have to clean it up from supports and stuff so let's bring out our miniatures first impression 
number one, we have the dragon head that they sent transparent, which made it a little bit difficult to see how good the quality was, so we sprayed it black. And then once we sprayed it black, you can sort of see that the texture on this print, it's, it's different. It's very different. It isn't like... The, the texture isn't insane, like it, it, it's not detracting. Can you see this texture? Yeah, I can see the it's texture. It's like a sandpaper. Yeah, almost. Um, and you also kind of lose the detail of the eye, so like you don't have the eyelids or the tiny eye no. and stuff that you have on the Frozen printer. It would have been so fun to have the Emulator print though. No shit, sure. <laughs> but in terms of quality, it is lacking a little bit. I do have a lot of positives with this. You don't have any like form of warping on the back of the head that no. you had with the Anycubic printer. Yeah. And I do think that the quality is really good. So like if you're making toys and maybe not super detailed miniatures. This is probably really good. This enough. is probably the, the best thing to use because you don't have to do any cleanup yeah. of the supports and sand it and stuff. And it just looks really neat, I would say. From that. What do you think about the dwarf? Okay, so the dwarf, I'm a bit torn because, like, it's a 100 to 150,000 dollar printer. Yeah, and you that would, isn't designed to make super small prints. <laughs> but you would assume that yeah. money equals quality. Yeah. And it's a bit weird because you have yeah. some areas where it's like neat ish, mm -hmm. and then you have some other areas like the eye sockets and stuff where it's just ugly. I do wonder if it has a little bit to do with kind of the angle of the of the print. So when it's printed, it, it is, produces better quality on, to some yeah. of the angles. The print quality is probably slightly less detailed than the Anycube printer, which is the cheapest one in the test. But if we look at the back, like there is no details blending together no. like it did on the Anycubic no, printer, where the light soft. quality is like yeah. bad. So it's more about like not having the maybe highest resolution. But Lucas, I kind of want to show you one more thing. Because the company Protec from Sweden that sells these printers were kind enough to make another test for us. And this, my ladies and gentlemen, is a troll. Hopefully also from an upcoming board game that maybe comes out in two years or so. But they did a print to kind of show what you can do with it. Where they have a heart 3D printed in color inside of a miniature. That is transparent. So you have... You have all the veins going out from the heart just yeah. showing that this is a living being. Pretty, pretty freak. I, I just thought this was one of the coolest ideas that I've ever seen. So imagine... If you have a miniature that's maybe more designed for this printer, that's like slightly a, bigger, slightly less detailed. Like a ghost or something. Yeah, maybe like a ring wraith or a Frodo with a ring no, on. And then you have like the ring in gold and you have the rest of the print transparent or something cool like that. Yeah. So that would have been pretty freaking amazing. I wonder if they're ever going to be able to match like the, the print quality of the DWS in the future. We're gonna see some pretty insane freaking cool stuff. But guys, what have we learned from this video? Frozen still slaps everything in the cheap range. Yeah. Hey Gears, very nice system to print on, but not quite up to the detail level of Frozen. Emulero is still the best freaking 3D printer in the world. And do you get more insane stuff the more money you pay? No. Well, you kind of, but not in terms of detail. If you guys enjoy our videos, uh, thank you so much for watching. Please smash like if you feel like you learned something. If you do like painting miniatures, maybe a 3D printed one, do go and check out our paint set. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. We have three paint sets with all the paints that we use on a daily basis. And everything we paint on this channel is painted with these 36 paints. So if you want to paint like us, Go check it out. <laughs> Massive thanks to this week's sponsor, Vite Vault. Go check out their podcast if you haven't already. And as always, a massive gadonkious thanks to our amazing patrons. Look at this guy. I ate him. Not thanks to you anymore. <laughs> and all these top donors. Yeah, and this one. What I ate that guy eating too. our top donors, you yeah. can't do this. See you next week. <laughs> Peace out.